If you work in business, marketing or sales, you've definitely come across one of these before. A funnel. People go in, customers come out. And the percentage difference between the two is what's known as the conversion rate. But when it comes to using and measuring conversion rates, a lot of businesses are making some pretty costly mistakes. So today we're going to look at six of the most common ones and what you can do to avoid them. Welcome to Data Smarties, the show where we get smart with data and Smarties. So you've heard of tunnel vision before. Funnel vision is what happens when you focus on just one stage of the funnel and ignore everything else. Even if you're just optimizing one small stage of the funnel, you still need to look at the entire customer journey, including who those customers are, what they've encountered so far, and what they're intending to do in the future. Let's explore what I mean with Smarties. Imagine you're responsible for optimizing a landing page. It's converting new customers at a rate of about 1% and you'd like to increase this. Now you've been A-B testing this thing for months. You've changed the copy, you've changed the UI, you've changed the form, and nothing is working. But what if the problem doesn't lie on the landing page itself? We need to remember that sometimes the most effective way to improve a conversion rate further down the funnel is to make changes higher up the funnel. If we only ever look at one stage of the funnel, we can miss out on bigger, more important changes that need to happen across the entire customer journey. I find funnel vision is particularly common with teams who treat the customer journey like a bit of a relay race. Everybody's only thinking about their section of the race and what they can do to improve it. Instead, it's better to team up and think about that customer journey as a whole. Because when we do this, this is where we can uncover the insights that make the biggest impact. I once ran a YouTube ad campaign that was recording some pretty amazing click-through rates. They were almost too good. They were like suspiciously good. So I took a closer look at the reporting. I wanted to know what was going on. I wanted to know where these ads specifically were being shown. So they were being shown on videos like Peppa Pig and Bluey and Baby Shark. This is clearly not my target audience. It turned out that due to a fault with YouTube's Performance Max algorithm, my ads weren't being shown to who I wanted them to be, which is small business leaders. They were being shown to the children who were using the parents' devices to watch their favorite cartoons. And many of these children must have been so impatient to get to the Peppa Pig video that they kept clicking on my ad, dramatically increasing the click-through rate. The point is you need to be careful about drawing conclusions from conversion rates, particularly at the top of the funnel. If you work in digital advertising or lead generation, then your conversion rates count for nothing if you're producing bad leads who don't stand any chance of converting further down the funnel. In order to work out if you're having a positive impact on the business, you need to understand how your leads are performing at every stage of the funnel, not just your own. Conversion rate is not an end in itself. What I mean by this is don't celebrate improving your conversion rate from 10% to 15% if you lost half of your customers in the process. It sounds obvious, but people do this all the time, particularly when you know they're trying to make themselves look good. Conversion rate is what you'd call a diagnostic measure. It helps us understand what's going on, but on its own, it's not a measure of impact. Because at the end of the day, we don't really care about diagnostic measures. What we care about is profit. I mean, smarties, I mean profit. You don't always need to segment, but some of the best insights I've had have been when I've segmented my audience and looked at those conversion rates separately. Of course, how you segment your customers is going to depend on your own business and marketing strategy, but let's take a look at a couple of instances where it nearly always makes sense to segment. Existing customers versus new customers. If you have a website or a platform that's used by new customers as well as existing customers, you're going to want to view their behavior separately. Often, conversion rates are designed around the journey taken by new customers, and that data is going to be skewed if you have lots of existing customers who are just coming back to use your platform or your homepage. Ad traffic versus organic traffic. Ads traffic is naturally going to perform very differently from those people who found your site organically. Plus, you're paying for ads traffic, so there's a greater need to see how it's performing. So you're going to want to segment that and look at the conversion rate separately. 
You should be careful of segmenting too much, particularly if that means your segments are very small. Which brings us on to one of our next mistakes. I'm probably going to do another video on what makes a good representative sample, but the main point is you should beware conversion rates which have come from small samples. If your sample is very small, that means your conversion rate is unreliable because your conversion rate can vary a lot due to small changes in the data. Don't draw conclusions about conversion rates from small samples. So this is a massive pet peeve of mine, and it's about industry benchmarks. Using industry benchmarks to decide what is or isn't a good conversion rate for your landing page, or your email, or your marketing campaign, is a bad idea. I completely understand the instinct. You want to sense check if what you're doing is particularly good or particularly bad compared to your competitors, and that's especially true if you've invested money. But there are so many other specific situational factors that will affect your conversion rate before you even get near industry category. They include your audience, your brand, how much your audience trusts your brand, your specific call to action, how you've presented that call to action, how you've incentivized that call to action, your product, the price of your product, whether your audience knows the price of your product, whether your audience is in the market to purchase your product, and whether or not you're even trying to push a conversion in the first place, which is not always the case. These are all things which can dramatically affect your conversion rate, and they're going to be specific to you and what it is you're trying to do. So for someone like MailChimp to say that an architecture brand can expect a click-through rate of 2.51%, but a beauty brand should only expect a click-through rate of 1.92%. I mean, this is interesting on one level, but on a practical level, it's meaningless. Remember, conversion rates are a diagnostic measure. They help you understand what's going on in your customer journey. They're not an end in themselves. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And if you've got any questions or ideas for other videos you'd like me to cover, just leave those in comments and I will get back to you. And if you want to better visualize your own data, including your conversion rates, check out Gecko Board. Gecko Board makes it easy to build live KPI dashboards that let you know exactly what's going on. Uh, we connect with over 80 data sources um, so you can see your metrics in real time on a live KPI dashboard. Just head over to geckoboard.com and check it out. There's a free trial. Um, you could be building dashboards in no time. Otherwise, thank you for watching. Have a great day.